we've had a lot of ex players on, but now we've got an ex competitor, and not only just an ex competitor, Stephen Bardo, uh, a former uh, Illinois player and now a Big Ten Network broadcaster. First of all, thank you, Steve, for doing this on such short notice. I, I appreciate you. Although he's going to be joining us weekly here soon. So, first of all, make sure you're going to, uh, you've got a couple different places. Go to Bardo's Tribe dot com uh and for all big 10 basketball fans it's going to be just a complete coverage of, of the big 10 i assume right yep yeah it's kind of a uh take you behind the scenes we kind of look at the plays we kind of break down film uh <clears throat> you know just take you inside of what big 10 basketball is all about and have fans experience it closer to what a player goes through like with skull sessions which means film session, that type of thing. Just to take um, Big Ten fans through exactly what a college athlete in the Big Ten would go through. Make sure you go there. Again, that's Bartlestribe.com uh, to keep up with that. And he is a man that's going to be out and about. He's got a lot of games coming up already uh, early on. And you'll see Michigan, Michigan State, and Indiana by within the next two weeks. Yep. All of that is within the next two weeks, so uh, that, that's crazy, but the season has come, and, and it's just fast and heavy. Uh, you had your experiences with Bob Knight as a, a player, uh, first of all, and I was at, and we've talked about this the, uh, before, you probably don't remember, but I was at that damn game, <laughs> and I think it was 1989, I was a student then, yep. uh, so I was still, I still had my fan I was still able to wear my fan hat at the time. And, man, which is odd, Todd Leary was on with us the other day, and he was talking about McKenzie and Baco. And he said that he believes, and he does not throw out compliments like this, but he said that he thinks that McKenzie and Baco is the best shooter Indiana has brought in since Jay Edwards. And I was like, what? Because he played with Pat Graham. He played with Damon Bailey and Eric Anderson and, and Brian Evans and uh, Calbert Chaney. And then all the guys that A.J. Guyton that has come after that. I'm like, wow, he, he doesn't say things like that. Uh, so that was crazy. You were in that era of Jay Edwards. And there was a game. Jay Edwards was just ice cold. He was a he was just a, a cold-blooded killer when it was shooter. Didn't matter if it was. 10 minutes or two seconds, it was the same thing for him. And he's going to hit that shot. And he did uh, in 89 against Illinois. Uh, there may have been like three seconds left when he hits the shot. So this game is over. Not so fast, my friends, like Lee Corso would say. Uh, Bardo's boys were able to still hit a shot and beat Indiana at, at, at Simon Scott Assembly Hall. And that had to be a gigantic night for you guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, anytime that uh, you can go to Bloomington in a venue that, you know, I I saw early on when my brother was there the year they won the national championship with Isaiah Thomas. I, it, You know, I, I've got childhood memories of going to Assembly Hall and watching the games and seeing the energy and the, the – Was your brother a student at IU? No, no, no. He, play, he played on the national championship team. He was a freshman. And then, you know, some some things happened at the end of the year and he had to transfer. But he was on that team with Landon Turner, uh, Ray Tolbert, Randy Whitman, Ted Kitchell. He was on that team. I did not know that, man. Yeah. So Bobby Knight's been to our house. He used to come to our high school. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had a lot of interaction with Coach Knight. And it wasn't always good, but I've, I've I had a lot of well, interaction. You're not the only one that can say that, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, but you know what, though, Jim, to be honest, man, you know, people will point to that. If we went up under the hood with everybody, everybody's got some stuff that's not great. But we're right. talking about, in my opinion, the best college basketball coach to ever do it. I've never seen a coach go through a tournament and win a game in the 50s in the second round and beat UNLV at their game scoring 90-plus in a Final Four. I've never seen a coach do that. I've never seen a coach win a Power Five conference title with a guy named Ty Jadlow as your starting center. No no shade to Ty Jadlow because he, right. he was a pretty good player, but he wasn't an elite Big Ten center. 
So Bob, Bob Knight did a lot of things that I think people forget about that were really unique and special. Yeah, I actually uh, talked about that earlier that I, I used the uh, uh, Bum Phillips old line that he can he can take his in and beat urine or he yep. can take urine and beat his in. That's right. Uh, and it was it was all about coaching. It was about strategy. He I mean, uh, Dick Vitale nicknamed him the general. But that was very uh, apropos because and he was a gigantic history buff. But he approached it in that way. And it was odd that he came from Army uh, as well. But he approached everything in that way with structure. Uh, but yet the motion offense was about uh, options, making yes. decisions. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons that we were so successful against Indiana, I was six and two. I like to brag on that in my four years. And, and the reason, should. one of the reasons was that we were very unique in the fact that we could switch everything defensively. If you try to go man up with Indiana, you tried to fight through the screens, you tried to do all the reading reacts, they were going to eat you up. And so even with our athleticism and our ability to, to switch on defense, they still found ways to beat us. That game that you referenced earlier, Jim, Joe Hillman lit me up for 24 points. <laughs> and I was the defensive player of the year, right? Because Bobby Knight knew how to put his guys in position to be successful. And, and so I could go on and on about the different things that he was able to accomplish with players that outside of Bob Knight's system may not have had a ton of success. Joe was just on with us a little bit earlier. And so it's, it's great to, uh, that you mentioned that that's funny. Uh, th but these stories are all great because they just, there's, there's so many things that, uh, that I'm learning. Uh, I, Still, I did not know your brother was on that national championship team. That's awesome to learn. Um, I knew the candy stripe sweat warm-ups. Uh, that Knight took that from the IU swimming team, who back then was uber successful, had Mark Spitz and guys like that. But I thought it was like their warm-ups. It wasn't. The Doc Councilman had candy stripe speedos on his players. Uh <laughs> So I mean, so there's a story for you. I did not know that it was Speedos that he had candy striped, and the reason he did that, John Leskowski just told us the story, is they had cameras underwater to watch the hip strokes of his swimmers. That's how scientific he got wow. down and used the candy stripes to watch it. And but Bob Knight saw that and said, "Hey, that would be great for us." And that's where the candy stripe warmups came from. Uh, but the speedo thing, I'm like, yeah, I hope they don't do that again, but, <laughs> but who knows? But, uh, yeah, that's just kind of funny. No, there's a, I'm sure that, um, for the next few days, there'll be a number of people that will come out and share their experiences with coach Knight and, uh, kind of break down where they were and what was going on and what was coach Knight's reaction. Uh, Robbie Hummel tells a great story, uh, last night on big 10 network where, He's playing up in Minnesota, and Bob Knight was calling the game. Bob Knight at the break, they, everybody, you know, they go to the sideline for the for the timeout. Bobby Knight takes off the, the headset, and he's yelling at the referees, telling about call more fouls. You're not calling enough fouls. And Robbie talked about him being a bigger-than-life presence. So you got to remember, Jim, when he first came to our house to recruit my brother, I was in the eighth grade, I believe. Oh. And Bob Knight is a was a big man, like six five. Yeah, but but big and oh, yes. like his presence. There was almost like an aura around him that demanded I, respect. And so, uh, you know, every, everybody's got a story uh, around Bob Knight, and it, you know, it's fun hearing all these uh, good memories of him. Yeah, I, I understand and agree with you. He he was, you know, his reputation already. It, it walked through the door before he did. But then when he walked through the door, there's this six foot five big old dude yeah. that you've seen. You're like, oh, I don't want none of that. Because, yeah. uh, yeah. wow. But, uh, and then, well, and then during his TV uh, career, I remember him yelling at a fan, hey, you want to come back here and do this? Sit down otherwise. <laughs> but yeah. that's what you got to, uh, that's what a part of what everybody loved is the unfiltered part. Of course, there were times where it went too far, but uh, I can't say I can't say that I haven't done that in, in many ways in life. So 
but the, what he was able to do on the court uh, as a coach was was really um, amazing. And not to say that there hasn't been other great coaches. Of course there has. Uh, his, his assistant, Mike Krzyzewski, was a great coach in his own right. Many other coaches, your coach uh, as well. Was you do it? Was Weber your coach? No, who? No, Lou Henson. Oh, oh, Ludu. That's right, yeah. the Ludu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, forgot about Lou Henson, a long time uh, Illini coach. But and that was a great rivalry, Indiana and Illinois back during those times. Oh, there's no question about it. And you know, you. Back then, to me, because I've been associated with the conference for close to 35 years, um, I think that that was the glory era of the Big Ten Conference. That's just me. There were two national championships won in the four years that I was at Illinois by the Big Ten, Indiana and Michigan. And so, you know, you you try to approach every game the same, but it's not possible. And I, I know the coaches will tell the, the fans and the media that it, it, it doesn't work that way. We're human. We know that going into, I know it's called Simon Scott, but it will always be Assembly Hall to me. And going into Assembly Hall, I knew what to tell my teammates because they didn't know they didn't know what they were getting into. The guys who were first time going into Bloomington, they did not understand what they were getting into. And so I was able to kind of share that like, guys, look, you know, when, when Lou and Dick Nagy and Jimmy Collins, God rest their souls, would leave the room and we'd have a team – a player's little get together. I say, guys, you better strap it up and bring it because the energy in this building is going to be like none other than you've experienced. And when Bob Knight comes on the floor and he gets animated and gets after his guys, the crowd is, is as good as I've seen it in the country. And so um, it was a rivalry and Illinois fans used to love to hate Bob Knight. They l used to love to hate him, although they respected him. And so uh, it, it was a, it was really good. There was no trash talking among the players. It was a, a total respect thing. Um, I remember Bob Knight coming off the court one time and telling me, he said, man, I recruited the wrong Bardo. And he meant it as a compliment <laughs> in his own quirky way. And I took I took offense to it because I was young and immature and emotional. And, you know, I kind of scoffed at him a little bit. But, um, you know, it, it was it was special to go and, and play the Hoosiers. You know, if you if you're an Illini, you get a chance to go to Indiana and play. Come on, man! It's not many things better than that. Uh, Matt pointing out that Lou actually had the most wins in the Big Ten Conference uh, during the '80s. I did not know that. Yeah, Lou was quite successful. He he ripped off a number of 20 win seasons. I think he had like 20 20 wins, 20 straight 20 wins, something like that. Something wow. ridiculously consistent. Yeah, Lou, Lou is underrated. Yeah, that's that's crazy. But yeah, the 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 rivalries, and I know that you can't really speak to the IU Purdue rivalry, but Bob Knight embraced those rivalries, and but he did it as with all what as I've learned, every he had a reason for every single thing he did. Uh, whether it, it seemed crazy or quirky, he had reasons. He knew what he was doing. Uh, the players have talked to me about, you know, at, during the NCAA tournament, he would, you know, when he's making the you know, game faces and doing all that silliness, that's to take the load off of, the focus off of them and put it on himself. Uh, and then, but after they would win, Joe Hillman said it would be all about the players when he was talking. Uh, and so the, the intelligence that he had, was was just off the charts. Well, I, I I'd like I liken him to a savant, and in terms of uh, he had total knowledge of the game. There was not a situation that he had not seen, and he had this innate ability to know what to do in those scenarios. And it, it didn't always turn out well with the chair throwing and you know getting three technicals from Teddy Valentine where you could only get two, but Teddy gave him three. You know, and so. Those are the parts that people like to expound on. But I'll, I'll give you another story. Uh, Mark Robinson played during the time that I played. He played at Indiana. He transferred in. And when Mark Robinson finished uh, playing at Indiana, Coach Knight set up a number of opportunities for him, jobs, um, uh, interviews, meeting people to try to get Mark 
on the right track. Now, now let's think about this, Jim. All the players that played for Bobby Knight, right? He did this all the time, but there was no camera around. We didn't have cell phones, so nobody was documented. He did this all the time. So there were there's going to be some players that you don't like just based on personality and things like that, or players that don't like you as a coach. But 90% of the players that came through Bob Knight's system, they absolutely love him. And I'll leave you with this. When you think about his impact, look at his coaching tree. Who has a better coaching tree than Bob Knight? I don't think it goes down to managers. I mean, Dusty May, who took Florida Atlantic last year, was a manager. Uh, Lawrence Frank, yep. who went to the NBA as a coach and GM, was yep. a manager. L.J. Wright, who is uh, in charge of all men's NCAA championships, it was a manager. Uh, Scott Dolson, who's IU's athletics director, yep. was a manager. So, yeah, it's crazy how far that goes down.